whose parents hail from Assam. All Assamese people take great pride in sharing a very warm bond with Mike. Mike has visited Assam earlier and interacted with students of educational institutions across the region. Mike is a great inspiration for the students and youth of Assam. And it's our privilege to welcome Mike to this virtual address at Kalkaranga University. We ask you to please uh, be patient with us while we try to connect this virtual call to Mike. Hello there. Testing, testing. Hello. See that now. Are you able to hear us? Yes, we are. And how is the video there? Sorry? It's, it's pretty good. I mean, no, we can't see anything as yet. The audio is pretty good, but the video is uh, not yet available. Okay. Uh, you should have a picture there. Yes. And uh, we are ready when you are. Uh, I mean, we don't have the video yet. We have a picture. We have a still picture. Can you see our video? Yeah, we can see yeah. our video. Yes, we can. Okay. Hello, good morning, Mike. Uh, welcome to Kajiranga University. <coughs> Hi, Ankur. Hello. Uh, for the benefit of everybody, let me introduce uh, Colonel Michael Edward Pinke, a NASA astronaut who had various space uh, flight experiences and happens to be the son-in-law of Assam. We are very privileged to have you with us this morning, Mike. Thank you, Ankur, for organizing this. Uh, over to you, Mike. Can you see the audience? Is it too dark? Uh, yes, we can. Okay. Uh, good morning, everybody. Namaskar. Yes. Can we have a big round of applause for Mike? Yeah. And I think uh, uh, Mr. Bora here, Ankur, uh, would uh, like to uh, say a few words before we start, but uh, just to say, uh, uh, good morning to everyone. Thank you, uh, and it's uh, great to be uh, at least virtually in Jorhat at uh, the great Kaziranga University. And uh, it's, uh, I wish I were there in person, but this is the next best thing. Uh, you all look very fine this morning. Uh, thank you for coming in on a Saturday. And I will talk a little bit about uh, NASA, what we're doing here in space, and some of my adventures in space. And then at the end, we'll have a chance for a question and answer. But I'd like to talk uh, to start out with uh, my friend uh, Ankur Bora here. Uh, hi, all the students and uh, lecturers and professors and faculty members of Kaziranga University. I'm so glad uh, that uh, we could. Uh, I have been trying for a long, long time. Eventually, it worked out. So I'm very glad. And today, also, we are uh, releasing the sixth edition of Magazine Friends. Uh, so the friends we are sharing the experience of uh, all the non-residents who have been doing extremely well in their particular field of uh, study and areas. Um, so that's what I'm trying to uh, focus on the strength of uh, non-residents that so that we can inspire you. That it is not about what we are lacking, but it is all about what we have so that you will be sufficiently inspired to follow them. That is what uh, the Friends magazine is uh, all about. 
and uh, I, I uh, today also will be keeping copies of the magazine so that you will be able to study and we, uh, we I am requesting Pratik Sarma to distribute the magazine uh, among the students and also participants. Um, so I am I am so glad that that the event eventually it is taking place. Uh, thanks for all of you. And now I am uh, uh, talking, going to talk about Mike. Uh, uh, so despite his busy schedule, he is able to uh, devote his time uh, to talk with you, to talk with all of you. Um, so I am uh, so thankful uh, to Mike that um, and it is just a beginning. That is what I am. I would like to emphasize again and again that we have started a journey, but it is just a small step. I am looking forward uh, for a long-term uh, uh, cooperation, communication between us and the Kaziranga University. So we'll we'll continue to talk and discuss. Uh, so now I am um, giving it uh, to Mike. He will start uh, interacting with you all. Thank you. Okay, so far uh, you can see us. Okay, video is good. Sapi ka se nahi. Yes. Sapi ka se. Acha. Okay. Uh, so let me start my uh, formal presentation. But uh, as we uh, as we uh, begin that, I'd like to just uh, say a few opening remarks of uh, how much uh, a song means to me, uh, how much it's uh, important to my family, uh, how lucky I am that uh, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Rupesh Wakia would allow me to marry their daughter. Um, and uh, and uh, the nice family that uh, we have been able to make together, and I couldn't have done it uh, without uh, without my Assamese uh, side of the family, and uh, without the the, you know, the support of my wife and her parents and the family, which is a big important uh, part of Assamese, part of Indian culture, is the family, right? It is without that family, we can't accomplish our journeys, and that's one of the strengths that uh, Song has is the great family. Values the great family relationships that allow us to go out and explore the universe around us. And there's so many uh, uh, folks and uh, students there that uh, really uh, we're just uh, uh, starting the uh, you know starting the path. But uh, you will continue uh, having the similar adventures and the even better adventures that, than Alcor and myself. Uh, there's a lot of uh, great things out there. Today I'm going to share some of the things uh, that I've seen. In space, and what my job here at the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, uh, NASA. So I'd like to uh, keep a sh start with uh, my presentation, and again, it's uh, really great to be at least virtually at the Kaziranga University. And uh, one of the things I like about Kaziranga University is that uh, the, the, the uh, famous uh, Assamese rhinoceros, uh, the what I think called boar, right? Uh, so uh, I've been to Kaziranga State uh, Park, and it's uh, one of my best memories of all the places that I've been to. So let's uh, start by talking about the, what we're doing at, the, at NASA. I worked aboard the International Space Station. I spent over one year of my life in uh, uh, in space. Uh, I've gotten to see our whole beautiful planet. It's the best beautiful planet in the solar system. And let me share a little bit about what it's like with you, uh, what our International Space Station is about and uh, the adventure we have. Only outpost to the stars. Uh, here I am uh, on board uh, in space. It's a it's an amazing place. It's a wonderful place. It takes 40 year old men and turns them into children again. Uh, you can see that the laws of physics are different. Uh, being in space makes you a better dancer. And uh, there's uh, just uh, it's just a joy uh, when human beings uh, explore this universe around us. We can 
examine the laws of physics, angular momentum conservation, the law of Bonk. And uh, we can fly when we're inside our beautiful space station. It's a, it's a real amazing thing. Uh, my friend uh, Shamatov and I one day wanted to build a, uh, an aquarium. So we just made a big ball of water. We didn't have real fish. So we put these little candy fish inside. I invented a new maneuver called the Iron Man. Uh, I've worked on different ways of using water to wash our faces. As well as uh, now everyone wants to do the Iron Man. My commander, Mark Kelly, wanted to do it. And Greg Johnson, and then I showed him how to do it again. Ricky Bobby, Drew Foistel, and then Shamatov. Again, we all just enjoy being in space. That's what the inside of the space station looks like. It's, uh, it's a huge place with laboratories uh, built by different countries. Uh, you can see we have uh, a lot of people on board. Uh, right now we have six people on board. We have boy astronauts and girl astronauts. We have uh, people from different uh, backgrounds uh, and different uh, economic backgrounds as well as different countries. It's a, it's a really great place to do science. It's a really a good complement to what uh, human beings can do when we work together. And here we are flying into the Russian end of the space station. It looks a little bit different, but it's all connected and we all work well together. And if we can work well together in space, I think we can work well together here on beautiful planet Earth. And this is what planet Earth looks like when we go around. You can't see the borders of the countries, but you can certainly see the effect of humans on, on our planet in terms of the, I mean, we've conquered the night by understanding the laws of physics and how to move electrons around and able to make light at night. And you can just see how beautiful the planet is below us in the dark. You can see the clouds, you can see the, the thin limb of the atmosphere. It's just a, it's a, it's an amazing thing to do to look at our planet from space. Uh, you can see as we fly over Europe, and uh, you can see the flashing lights a little bit. So those are thunderstorms. Uh, you can see the outlines of the land uh, outlined by by different uh, by the by the lights at night. Here we are. We're flying over the African desert. You can see the Nile River as it feeds into the Red Sea. We can see everything from space, and it's just a real joy. I never saw this until I went to space. Those are the, the southern lights, not the northern lights, but there you can see the aurora. See the, the flashing of uh, thunderstorms as we have a, a uh, sunrise over the Pacific Ocean. Those are what we can see from our beautiful International Space Station. So uh, today I'd like to talk a little bit about, uh, I think everyone has a curiosity perhaps of where we are, what we're doing uh, with NASA. Uh, we, we, right now we, we uh, um, on our slide here, uh, just give kind of where we are. Where I know it's 2015, but just to uh, take a snapshot of where we were last year. We have an international space station. We have six crew members on board. Uh, we only get up there, up and down, because we retired the American space shuttle. We only go up and down with the Russians. Uh, so it's the Soyuz, uh, the Soyuz launch vehicle. We uh, launch four times a year uh, with the Russian partners. I did that twice already. And they're a great partnership. We launched and land in Kazakhstan. Um, the, uh, we resupply the spaceship with uh, with international partners, with the Russians, Europeans, Japanese. But uh, we also have a, a commercial resupply contract, a new thing that you hear in the United States where we send supplies up and down. It's sort of like a, a, a freight service for us. We give uh, this company, SpaceX, and or a company called Orbital. We give them the clothes, the food, the scientific experiments. They put it on a rocket and send it to space station. It's not a NASA vehicle, but uh, we pay them for the service. And with that money and expertise, they're building a whole infrastructure on uh, and a new way of uh, of making space more accessible for uh, for the planet. And along the way, it's establishing a new new business, a new industry for the United States. We're using a similar business model. And we, as we used with the airplane about 100 years ago. Let's move forward to just uh, two, two or three years from now, uh, when we still have the International Space Station. Uh, let's go back to the original slide. There we go. Uh, the International Space Station, we have more than six crew on board. We'll only launch twice with the Soyuz per year. And we have a new, uh, we're making new rockets and new capsules, even as we speak. That's my main job these days, is 
is to help make these new uh, come work with these new companies that are making a uh, commercial crew vehicles. We call them. Uh, SpaceX has a Dragon, and Boeing has the CST 100. And uh, in a couple of years, we'll be sending crews up and down uh, uh, to, the, to the space station with those. So not, we will no longer have to rely on the Russians only. We will no longer have to rely on just one space vehicle. We'll still resupply with our international partners, but we'll also have uh, the first Orion exploration missions. Uh, and I'll talk about the Orion program, but it's really important. We're no longer just uh, focusing on low Earth orbit, but NASA's going back to the basics, back to our, our, uh, our strength of, of exploring the solar system, exploring the world around us. We haven't had people, nobody's been on the moon since 1972. Uh, we're headed back that way. Because when we get to 2021, we'll still have the International Space Station, Soyuz, and the, and the commercial crew. We'll have the resupply with international partners, and we'll have our first people leaving low Earth orbit in a long time with the uh, Orion Exploration Mission Number Two. They'll go to a lunar orbit, uh, and uh, that, that's going to be very exciting. So we just had a new year; it's 2015. Happy Mog Bihu uh, coming up. But uh, we have uh, here at NASA for the next uh, you know, six or seven years, we have a lot of work in front of us, and it's very exciting. Next slide, please. Let's talk a little bit about our International Space Station. It's huge. It's as uh, big as a, as a football pitch. Uh, it weighs over a million pounds. Uh, it goes about 17,500 miles per hour, so that's 28,000 kilometers per hour around the Earth. Uh, it's about uh, 300 kilometers above the Earth. And uh, we go around the world every 90 minutes. So we see 16 sunrises and 16 sunsets every day. And why our country, the United States, next slide please, uh, uh, explores uh, and why we invest our money and time in the International Space Station. It's for a lot of good reasons, but we also get yeah. something out of it too. Uh, this global partnership that we have uh, with the International Space Station uh, has brought a lot of uh, good, um, so we say, uh, relationships and partnerships which are good for business, but also good for uh, for countries to have together. The, the more we work together, the less chance we have of fighting. Of fighting, I'm sorry. Uh, but it's all it's, it's good for global cooperation. Uh, so that's one good thing that uh, being part of the International Space Station is good for for my country, the United States. Uh, it, we're using it also to develop a commercial space market, which will help our, our industry and our economy. The space laboratory that we have up there. Uh, it advances scientific knowledge and you know, for, for uh, Earth's, Earth sciences, space sciences, physical sciences, biological sciences. And the more we understand about our universe, the better off life here is on planet Earth. And the space station is also a stepping stone for deep space exploration. It serves as the world's leading laboratory and test bed so we can get our technology uh, perfected or, or find out any of the problems before we go far away from home before we go to the moon, before we go to Mars, before we go to an asteroid. So that's the uh, advantage of having the space station near and close by. Next slide, please. We've uh, created a close but global partnership with the United States and Japan, and these great space powers, the European Space Agency, the Russians, and uh, the Canadian Space Agency. And a lot of these countries in the past, we weren't always friends, but in space we are. And if we can be friends in space, then we can be friends here on planet Earth. And I think that's also a message that uh, Encore here likes to talk about. And I think it's a, it's a good thing of, of, of how we can work together, how we can be kind.